You know, I'll be honest. I don't feel like getting myself dressed nice for this video. You guys are gonna have to get used to the white shirt for today. All right, roll. <laughs> You know, mobile games have really succumbed to a new level of degeneracy over the past few years. I was actually trying to look up Blade the other day. Do you guys remember Blade? That epic combat game where you overthrow a ruthless king by his throne? The game was fantastic. I think there was like four of them, but needless to say, it's off the app store. They just completely deleted it, and I'm kind of unsure why. Are we too full from the same copy and paste multiplayer games that are filled with bots to make us feel skilled enough to continue playing? Or do we not even reach the game and just admire the blatant lies we see on social media. The hell are you doing, Angry Birds? Come on, you're one of the heroes. I feel like mobile gaming is now only about the money, and we continue to feed their ever-growing monopoly because what the hell are we gonna do during family dinners? Talk? No, I'm playing Merge Mansion for the law. However, it's not quite right for me to say that all mobile game developers have sold their souls away. Every now and then, I stumble across a well-done mobile game that truly brings a meaningful experience while I'm on the go. It's unfortunate that I find that often these games go overlooked, but I'm really not that far off the mark when I say that all mobile games are about the money. Niche truly is important, and it seems that the profitable niche is something that I can play for two minutes and somehow watch four ads. However, what happens when a company completely abandons a niche and doesn't care about profits? When their games are vastly different, but still uphold a similar level of strange overtones and concepts? I'm gonna get real weird with it. When you can't quite see how a developer's journey went from making alpaca monstrosities to a game about dead children. I don't want to spoil too much, so sit back and let's explore the game development journey of Coco Sola. Coco Sola is a Japanese game developer who primarily makes mobile games with an emphasis on being unique and weird. However, what makes his developers so odd is how vastly different their games are while still remaining kind of strange. The games aren't necessarily scary or gory, but all contain bizarre and artistic topics. Let's start with the beginning, a game that actually became relatively popular, the Alpaca and Giraffe Breeding Games. Oh, uh, yes. No, I'm absolutely serious. I'm actually going to group these three games together because they're pretty much the same game, just reformatted to look slightly different. It's actually funny, I've actually played all of these in the past. Each game starts with a collection of the featured animal, either an alpaca or a giraffe. One of them is the main character, I guess you could say they're the chosen one, and they proceed to devour all the other animals and fuse them into their own body. Oh, hey, Phil, how's the wife? Holy shit! As more and more animals fuse together, the chosen one will evolve into a bulkish and devilishly handsome version of themselves. However, this level of confusing attraction will not remain. Bulk will turn to extra limbs, and extra limbs will turn to extra heads, and time will come until the animal can't even be called an animal anymore. Instead, just a piece of beauty. The game then takes a really odd turn and turns these alpacas into a religious symbol. Midway through the first game, when you form into a tower of heads, the screen will go black and the toll of bells will chime in the background. Two decapitated angel alpacas will appear, holding their heads in one hand and an axe in another. While I could be off the mark, I have a strong belief that these alpacas are meant to represent the decapitated saints. Allow me to get a little, uh, religious here for a second. See, in Christian art, it's very common to find imagery of headless saints holding their own head. This type of art and sculpture are meant to indicate that these saints were decapitated at one point for one reason or another. Well, isn't this a very convenient similarity, as the alpaca angels will proceed to decapitate all of your heads until you become a chopped up version of yourself only to then become even more deformed and unidentifiable. I'll be honest, the real purpose and joy of this game is just to see what monstrosity you can turn into next. And the end goal is really just becoming this huge and righteous Nordic god with different endings and different final forms that you can turn into. However, while this isn't that creative, I do find the ending to the giraffe game to be very interesting, especially when you see how Coco Sola's game development career changed over the course of time. At the end of the game, I am giraffe, something within yourself starts to speak to you. Emerging from your body comes... And alpaca? A dialogue breaks out between the giraffe and alpaca while placing a large emphasis on change. It addresses the world as an aggregate concept, which means a collection of smaller units to make up a whole. 
similar to the theme of all these games. It turned this seemingly random game about deformed giraffes and alpacas into a symbolism for how our world is constantly growing, breaking down, and evolving again. While this turn of events is an unexpectedly beautiful conclusion to the story, this marked a complete shift in Coco Sola's dev career. These three games were almost identical. However, from here on out, the theme and look to all of his games will begin to change drastically. The next game, titled Wonder Treehouse, gives us a warning that the story is not as warm and fuzzy as it may seem. I know I'm probably gonna regret this, but uh... Let's see what happens. The story starts with a text from an unknown individual saying, Ah, you're early today. Let's get started. The game begins and we find out that our characters are elementary school students about to graduate. They want to make some memories before they each go their own ways, so they decide to build the treehouse. However, it is warned that this forest is very dangerous, and the kids should probably stay away. <sighs> They're kids, come on. You know, I've been in the forest as a kid before. It was all fine. <laughs> For me? The gameplay is pretty much just collecting sticks. Three kids go off, two will stay and do, I don't know, a little dance, whatever this is, and the treehouse will slowly build. Between each upgrade, we get notes on the progress, however, they're pretty personal. Like this one just says we have to play like this while we can. Cryptic, but whatever, who am I to judge when midway through the game, a man-sized bunny appears to watch them behind a tree? Ugh, you know, at this point, I gotta make a business decision, huh? If this is a monster, then all right, cool, we're solid. But man, if this is like some creep in that suit, just trying to watch kids, like, like I know I post some weird stuff, but I have limits. I can't be doing that. Whatever, whatever. I hope I don't have to scrap this video. We build on, start to take a bath in an oil drum, and the bunny comes to take a closer look. Come on, please don't do it. I want to make this video. The bunny ends up joining our crew, and these two kids start acting kind of strange. Suddenly, in the next upgrade, the bunny is helping, but slips and falls off the treehouse. We see a weird image of one of those kids, and the sky goes dark. The bunny starts walking with the limp, most probably from the fall, and the kids start acting even stranger. <laughs> I swear to God, if an alpaca comes out at the end of this, this would be a complete waste of my time. Eventually, the two kids do fuse, but into a giant baby? Like a huge baby, his head touches the top of the treehouse. Suddenly, at this moment, a kid drops to his knees in agony, just facing the ground. However, this treehouse needs to get finished, so the entire plot lies on this kid's shoulder. The kids build and build, the baby has some fun, and suddenly we reach our ending. A large wind blows through, and something odd happens. The screen suddenly flashes from our current scene to one where the tree falls and kills all the kids but one, and then finally back to the original sunny day where the kids are having fun. Eventually, everything stops, and we hear the mysterious narrator talking about how it may be difficult to talk about these things, but he is seeing signs of improvement. See, you may not see it right away, but this was no story about some murderous bunny. This was instead a coping mechanism by one of the lone survivors of an accident in the forest when trying to build a treehouse with his friends. The man speaking is a therapist, and the other end is a lone survivor, recalling what happened through the information we get written in the notebooks. The child has trouble speaking after the trauma and must communicate through writing and drawing. We see the kids transform into these fluffy creatures and toys as their coping mechanisms, because this poor child cannot get over it the day he saw all his friends die while trying to make lifelong memories. Ugh, what the fuck? The next game is a pig simulator. It's like Cookie Clicker, but it said you get to pet a pig. Good pig. Coco Sola's final game is called The Witch's Isle, and it truly is a masterpiece when you compare it to all the other mobile games we have nowadays. You start the game as a woman in a bed visited by a witch who says you will die a painful death if you don't retrieve her urn by 4 a.m. You are then set off on a quest exploring a beautiful village created with detailed pixel art and filled with unique and thought-provoking NPCs such as Energetic Dog and Tall Woman. Each of these characters have a story and truly make the world come to life. With multiple endings and cinematic cuts Scenes, the Witch's Isle is the purest homage to Coco Sola's message, change. Growing from something small to a new person altogether, the constant effort of building things up and continuing to push forward as they're torn down, learning how to actually take your problems and grow with them. Coco Sola may have started here and ended here, but that does not mean there wasn't beauty along the way. The development journey of Coco Sola is most probably one of the most strangest things I've ever seen, but somehow in the mix of deformed alpacas, beautiful farms and dead children, it was able to convey the beauty of growth and why we as people should never stop changing. <laughs> Stupid pig.